Okay, before we move on from this chapter on first order responses, I just want to go through and just do a summary, final summary of the procedure you need to know in order to solve for any first order response of any type of circuit that we have studied in this chapter. So, what do we need to know? First of all, you got to remember that only VC or IL can be directly solved using the general response equation. This is very important. If you try to use a general response equation for any other quantity besides the voltage across the capacitor or the current through the inductor, you're probably going to get the wrong answer. So the reason for this is only the voltage across the capacitor or the current through the inductor will persist across a switching event. So that's the only way you can be sure of a valid value before and after a switching event is for the voltage across the capacitor, the current through the inductor, because they cannot change instantaneously. So two equations, Vc of t is equal to our final value times 1 minus e to the minus t over tau plus our initial value times e to the minus t over tau, where tau is equal to rc. So either this or this. i of l is equal to i final times 1 minus e to the minus t over tau plus i initial times e to the minus t over tau, where tau is equal to L over R. So these are the only two quantities that this solution works for, that this equation works for, the general solution. All right? So given this, what do we need to find? First of all, Find the initial value of VC or IL before the switching event. And it doesn't matter whether that switching event happens because of a switch changing the topology of the circuit or because of a unit step function. But either way, you're going to have a switching event. And we always have used the switching event at time t equals zero just because it makes the math easier. You can actually mathematically make a switching event happen at any time t, but it makes the math more complex for no good reason. So we're always going to assume t equals zero. All right? So unless otherwise stated, You should always assume steady state conditions for t less than zero. In other words, dv dt is equal to zero, di dt is equal to zero throughout the circuit. All voltages and all currents are stable. And in that case, 
IC is equal to zero through a capacitor. In other words, the capacitor acts like an open circuit. VL is equal to zero. The inductor acts like a short circuit. And from here, you find VC. just before the switching event is equal to VC, just after the switching event is equal to VC zero, and that will be equal to your initial condition. Or IL just before the switching event is equal to IL just after the switching event is equal to IL of zero is equal to I initial. So find the voltage across the capacitor or the current through the inductor for T less than zero, assuming steady state conditions, and you will have your initial condition. All right, what's next? After the switching event, Calculate the final value assuming T goes to infinity. So we're going to calculate the final value of the voltage across the capacitor or the current through the inductor as T goes to infinity and the circuit returns to steady state. And therefore, once again, steady state operation, all of these things will hold. So we once again, IC is equal to zero, VL is equal to zero, and then you calculate the final values, and what we're going to get then is that VC as T goes to infinity will be equal to V final, and IL as T goes to infinity is equal to I final. And once again, this is assuming, once again, that IC is equal to zero, VL is equal to zero. So once again, you're using those steady state assumptions. Next step. For step three, Find tau after the switching event. And you're going to do that by calculating R is equal to the R equivalent is equal to the R Thevenin resistance across either C or L, depending upon the circuit. And we use standard Thevenin methodology to find RTH. So Thevenin's theorem, the same techniques. Make sure you zero out any independent sources. 
and use the same techniques if necessary, source driving. Next, plug those values in. Plug the initial, final, and tau values into the general response equation. And then once you've done, done that, you have the value for VC or IL. Anything else you need, given VC or IL, use KVL, KCL, Ohm's Law, or IC is equal to C to VC dT, or VL is equal to L DIL dT. Use all these techniques to solve for any other voltages or currents indirectly. Now please note, when you use this methodology, you don't need to worry about whether the problem is a forced response or a natural response or anything else. Use this methodology, write down the answer. If it's a forced response or a natural response, it will be obvious once you write the answer. But beforehand, you don't need to worry about it. Find the initial condition, find the final condition, find tau. As long as you understand this method methodology, it's impossible to be given a problem that you cannot solve. You will be able to solve any problem handed to you.